Let's take a look at problem number three. And this says find the volume of the solid. Um, volume of the solid by revolving a region bounded by the graphs of y is equal to the square root of x minus 2 and y is equal to x minus 2 to the second power about the x-axis using the washer method. Uh, the last problem we had it flush against the uh, x-axis and we said we didn't have to worry about um, you know like subtracting uh, two functions. Well this one we do. Um, so let's see how to do this. Let's first let's graph this and see what in the world it looks like. So I press my y equals, press my clear to clear wherever's there, and I got square root of x minus 2. So I do second x squared, x minus 2. You can put a closing parenthesis if you want, and I don't have to have it. Then down arrow, and on y2, I'm going to put the x minus 2 to the second power. So I do beginning parentheses, x minus 2, close parentheses, and then the second power. <coughs> and now graph. Well, obviously, right here is where they're doing something, but who knows what. So let's zoom in. I'll choose um, Zoom, and I want to choose Z-Box, the first one. Press Enter one time. Now I'm going to use my left arrow key and my up arrow key. And we're putting this in the upper left-hand corner where we want our box to be. And that's probably okay right there. So I'll go ahead and press Enter one time. And then down arrow. And then right arrow. Until it um, encompasses uh, where that intersection is, which kind of looks like right there would be good. So let's graph this. So we got that, and we got that. Um, now this is the area bounded, and if you have trouble seeing which is which, you can always go back to y equals. And like our first one here, I'm going to do my left arrow key until my flashing cursor is on this first slash, and I press enter one time. It'll become a thick slash. And now if I do a graph, that one right there is my square root. The, the shape of it should, should probably really tell you that. <coughs> well, the one furthest away from our x-axis is going to be our outer radius. And then the one closest in will be our inner radius. So the thick line is our outer, and the other one's our inner. Well, we have to find our points of intersection. You can write the problem down. Let me do that. Three. Okay, so we got y is equal to square root of x minus 2. And then um, y is equal to x minus 2 squared. Like that. So let's, f let's find our points of intersection. Because that'll, um, that'll give us our lower and upper limit for our integration. <coughs> so I'll set the square root of x minus 2 equal to x minus 2 squared. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, this isn't very, very nice. Um, hmm. Well, what I can do is, see yeah, how they're both x minus 2? Um, I could go ahead and square both sides, and get rid of the square root. Or I could have got everything over on one side and factored out what they had in common. So when I square this one over here, become that. So this gives us x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2 to the fourth power. <coughs> and um, I'm going to take the x minus 2 to the right side. So we got x minus 2 to the fourth power minus x minus 2. Now notice I left that inside of parentheses. Now it's a little easier to factor it out. Um, so I'll factor out an x minus 2. And on this one, that leaves us x minus 2 to the third power minus 1. And now we can set each of these factors equal to 0. So I set x minus 2 equals 0, and that gives us 2. And here I'll set the x minus 2 to the third power minus 1 equal to 0. And that gives us x minus 2 to the third equals 1. Um, take both sides to the one third power, or take the cube root of both sides. And we get this. Take the 2 over plus, and then the cube root of 1 is 1. So we get x is equal to 3. Okay, now that's not so easy uh, algebraically. But uh, we could use our calculator to do it. To find the intersections, if I do a second trace and choose intersect, I'll do enter on first curve, 
in our first curve. Well, oh, the graph doesn't exist there. See how Y is blank? I have to do my right arrow key until there's something there. Well, there is something there now. So press enter on first curve, enter on second curve, and for the guess, I'm going to put in. Um, uh, well, actually, where my cursor is fine, so I just press enter. <coughs> Excuse me. And we get x is equal to 3. That's this one here. So the x equals 2 is the one that we're missing. Um, now, sometimes when you got radicals, they do weird things at points. Like if I come here and do a second trace and choose intersect. Mm, try it again. Second trace. Boy, if it wasn't blind, I could be there. 5. And now do enter, enter. Let me put in 2.1. Remember how I said it does weird things? It's supposed to find one closest to it. Um, but I know it's supposed to be two. Um, just from looking at the graph, I can see that. So if I do a second trace and choose my intersect again. If I do enter, enter, and actually put in two for my guess, then it comes back with that answer. So I don't know. I you know the algebraically kind of looks actually a little bit easier. Uh, so we're going from two to three. And um, let's see, what were the instructions? Find the volume solved by a revolving region bounded by the graphs of this and this uh, about the x-axis using the washer method. So we're going to have our volume. And then this will go from A to B. And then we're going to take our R of x squared minus our little r of x squared and dx. Well, our outer one was this um, square root. Let me scroll up a little bit. I don't remember what it looks like. Okay, square root of x minus 2. And A and B are 2 and 3. That's our points of intersection we found. And um, let me see. Square root of x minus 2 to the second power minus, and then this would was what? x minus 2 squared? x minus 2 squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Squared. Dx. Okay, now we're ready to find this. So we've got 2 to 3. When you square the square root, they cancel each other away, so you're left with x minus 2. Minus, and when you square, uh, uh, square, well, you raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply them together. So that gives us x minus 2 to the fourth power dx. Um, now I could split these into separate integrals. Leave the pi out in front of all of them. So this would be um, 2 to 3 of x minus 2 dx minus and then uh, from 2 to 3 of x minus 2 to the fourth power dx. I did it that way because I don't want to multiply x minus 2 times itself 4 times. So we'll do a u substitution here. u would equal to x minus 2. du would equal, the derivative of x minus 2 is 1. So du would be dx. Okay, now over, over here, um, this would become, what would that become? Get rid of that. Okay, let's try that again. Big parentheses. Okay, so add 1 to our power, divide by our new power. The negative 2 becomes negative 2x. I got those. Then minus, and over here, this will become uh, x is equal to 2. I don't want to forget these are x values, and x is equal to 3. And this becomes u to the fourth du. <coughs> Okay, so on our first one here, uh, let's plug in our values. So we got, um, let's see, 1 half times 3 squared minus uh, 2 times 3 minus, and then 1 half times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 and minus, and um, add 1 to our power, divide by our new power, so that becomes 1 fifth u to the fifth. These are still x equals 2 and x equals 
Okay, so this gives us uh, 3 squared is 9, times that is 9 halves, minus 6. Uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So minus, and then 2, and then minus 4. And over here I put my u back in. Take the 1 fifth, and I can move it out in front, and not worry about it. So we got x minus 2 to the 5th power, and I'll change these back to 2 and 3. Okay. So we got um, 9 halves, minus 6, minus 2 minus 4 is a negative 2, and then negative out in front, I guess that becomes a positive 2, minus 1 fifth. Plug in my 3, so I got uh, 3 minus 2 to the 5th power, minus, plug in my 2, so I got 2 minus 2 to the 5th power. So that gives us pi times 9 halves minus 4, minus 1 fifth, and um, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 to the 5th power is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 to the 5th power is 0, so that drops away. So we got, uh, let's see, 9 halves minus 4 minus 1 fifth. And let's get a common denominator. Common denominator would be 10. So multiply the bottom part by 5, top part by 5. Here, multiply the bottom, that's 4 over 1. Multiply the bottom part by 10, multiply the top part by 10. Minus, bottom part by 2, top part by 2. 45 minus 40 is 5, minus 2 is 3, so we got 3 pi over 10. Assuming I didn't make a basic math error somewhere, which I'm very uh, good at um, on these. This uh, actually up here I could uh, plug in uh, my calculator and see what that gives me, and then multiply times pi, and that would tell me. But um, Actually, that's, uh, if I ignore the pi, it should give us 3 tenths, which is 0.3. So let's, let's actually plug that in, see what we get. And I'll choose this one right here. So I'm press my y equals, clear that, down arrow, clear that. For some reason on this uh, calculator, it doesn't um, clear out to slash here, so I have to cycle back through, enter, 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 enter. How many more do I got? There we go. Okay, and I want uh, x minus 2 minus and then beginning parentheses x minus 2 closing parentheses caret 4. Now I'm going to do second trace and choose my integration, the seventh one. And where are we going from? 2 to 3. So do 2 for my lower limit, enter, and 3 for my upper limit, enter, and we get 0 0.3, which is what we should get um, if, uh, if my answer matched. So it looks like I um, did the basic math right there.